Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So many years ago, I, interpreted, I attended a basic interpreter for the Deaf Institute in New York. And what was interesting is in, during, this, uh, during the summer, one of the questions that came up was, can deaf people hear God? And you can ask the same question, can blind people see God? Well, a few weeks ago, we had the story of the man who was born blind. And the conclusion of the story was that the blind man could see better than the seeing people. And so when, when, so when people are deaf, they can sometimes hear better than us. And when people are blind, sometimes they can see better than us if we look at it from a different perspective. So then we have our story today, why did the two men on the road not recognize Jesus? That's a common question. We don't really don't have the answer. Why didn't they recognize him? I think it's because of their expectations. Their expectations. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Do you hear the expectations? We expected one thing, and this is not what we saw. And so as Jesus rises and he walks with them, they don't see him even though he's right there with them. Their expectations. Some years ago, our, our, our family watched a series from National Geographic called Brain Games. And one of the, one of the episodes in this series uh, it, which would show you an event happening and say, okay, watch this, watch this story. And then after the story, after the story played out on the screen, then they would say, did you see the people in animal costumes walking by? Or did you see the scene change behind the background? Or did you see? And we didn't. Because we were watching one thing, we didn't see the other things going around behind it. So that's kind of what happens. We look, we see what we expect to see, and we often don't see the other things that are going around. So, so we don't see because we are looking for something else. Notice, notice when the disciples finally recognize Jesus. Mary recognized Jesus when he called her name. Mary, he said. And then he recognized her. Thomas recognized Jesus when Jesus showed them his hands and the wounds in his hands. The disciples at Emmaus recognized Jesus as he broke bread with them, as he ate with them. And they remembered Jesus breaking bread with them and eating with them. Why do we often not see God at work in our lives? Why do we often not recognize Jesus among us? Tolstoy, the Russian, uh, the Russian writer, told a short story called The Cobbler. Once upon a time there was a cobbler, a good and honorable man. One Christmas Eve he dreamed that the next day on Christmas, Christ was coming to his humble shop. Christmas morning he got up early and went to the woods to gather green boughs to decorate his shop for so great a guest. He laid out a fine woolen cape and some blankets to give to the Lord. He lit a fire and set out bread and meat and put the kettle on to boil. All morning he waited. Then a feeble old man came to his door asking to rest. 
The cobbler invited him to, in to sit and rest by the fire, where he gave the old man hot tea and cakes. When he left, the cobbler gave him a package of his best bread and meat. The day became afternoon. He saw a wounded soldier, his feet wrapped in bloody rags, limping slowly along the street. The cobbler called and invited him into his shop. He bathed the soldier's feet, wrapped them in clean cloth. Then he gave the grateful soldier the sturdiest shoes in the shop. When the soldier left, there was new strength in his step. As evening approached, the cobbler became discouraged. Just then, a young woman walked by, shivering and crying, carrying a baby in her arms. The cobbler called to her, asking what was wrong. Oh, sir, she said, my husband died of the fever, so I couldn't pay the rent. The landlord put us out of our home, and I'm traveling to the next town to stay with my husband's parents. But it's so far, I'm so hungry, and my baby is so cold. The cobbler brought her in to share his dinner with her. He took the woolen cape and the blanket he had set aside for the Christ and gave them to, to, to the woman to keep her and another baby warm. Then he hitched up his horse and cart and drove the woman to the next town. It was very late and Christmas was over when he finally got home. Sure that he had missed the Christ, he cried out, Why, Lord, why did you not come? Was I so unworthy? He sank to his knees in tears. <clears throat> then it seemed he heard a voice, sweeter than any other. My child, I kept my word. Three times I visited you, and three times you showed your love for me. I was the old man. I was the poor soldier. I was the cold and hungry woman with, and her baby. You warmed me at your fire. You bandaged my wounded feet. You fed me and clothed me. Did I not say whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, you do it to me? Jesus comes to us in many, many ways. Do we ever shut Christ out of our lives because he doesn't meet our expectations, our plans? Do we ever say no to Jesus because he makes us feel uncomfortable? Do we ever shut Christ out of our church because he doesn't fit the way we are accustomed to doing things? Do we miss Jesus because it would require us to change? Please stand for prayer.